We're studying the Amateur Extra license exam. We're on sub-element 9 alpha, and I promised that things would get easier in the last video, and boy howdy was I wrong. So we're talking about antennas now. So what is an isotropic radiator? It is a hypothetical lossless antenna having equal radiation intensity in all directions, used as a reference for antenna gain. So isotropic is a gain of one because it's a perfect circle all the way around. You're going to remember that. And the next thing I want to tell you is a dipole has approximately 2.15 decibels of gain over an isotropic. So if anything is referenced to a dipole, then you're going to subtract that 2.15 to figure the gain in reference to a dipole. What is the effective radiated power of a repeater station with 150 watts transmitter output power, 2 decibel feed line loss, 2.2 decibel duplexer loss, and a 7 dB to a dipole antenna gain? Now in this you do not have to factor in that uh, reference to the isotropic radiator and I have this worked out for you. If you'll start down at the bottom you need to add your losses in your gains and find the total loss or gain. So we took 2 and 2.2 that equals 4.2 decibels of loss and the gain is 7 decibels. And to find your total gain or loss you do 7 minus 4.2 equals a gain of 2.8 decibels. Now we need to convert that decibel number, which is logarithmic, to base 10. That is easy, easy, easy. Your base 10 is going to be 10. You take decibels and divide that by 10. That gives you 10 to the 0.28 power, which is 1.9. Finally, as if that wasn't enough, you multiply 1.9 times the power, the transmitter power, and that gives you a 285.8 watts effective radiated power. They have rounded up the answers in these tests, so round up you get 286 watts. That was question number two, and there's going to be two more like it on the test. What term describing total radiated power takes into account all gains and losses? Your losses are going to be from your coax and how long your coax run is, your connectors, all kinds of good stuff. That is the effective radiated power, so ERP. And if you have effective radiated power, there are certain times when we're limited to how much power we can radiate, and that's not the peak envelope power. That's effective radiated power. Which of the following factors affect the feed point impedance of an antenna? The feed point impedance is, a, in, is affected by antenna height. And I'm about to raise my antenna about 25 feet above the level that it is now. So I'm going to see a completely different tuning effect when I go to retune that antenna with my antenna tuner. I'm going to have to go through all the memories again and reset it. So factors that affect feed point out of these right here is antenna height. What does the term ground gain mean? That is an increase in signal strength from ground reflections in the environment of the antenna. And you can affect that. I had one guy joke that I should go out there and dump a bunch of salt in my backyard. That's going to kill the grass, but guess what? It's going to have a higher ground gain than the old traditional red clay of South Georgia. What is the effective radiated power of a repeater station with a 200 watts transmitter output, power output, 4 decibel feed line loss, 3.2 decibel duplexer loss, 8 decibel circulator loss, and a 10 decibel antenna gain? And that's decibel dipole. And when we transition into the math, I shortened it this time. If you need to see the full thing worked out, go back to number two. This is your gains, plus or minus, is 10, that's your gain, minus the sum of 4 and 3.2 and 0.8. And that gives you a plus 2 decibel gain. 
Now we convert that decibels into decimal. That gives you from logarithmic to decimal, you get 10 to 2 over 10 equals 10 to the 0.2 power, that's 1.58. And your ERP is 1.58 times the power, 200 watts, gives you 317 watts. They round it up on that. Uh, if you do that on your calculator, it's going to be a little bit smaller than that, so go ahead and round up. So that was question number six. Now we go to question number seven. Hey, guess what? It's another one of those. So you should be getting good at this by this point. And let's transition and I'll read it at the same time. What is the EREIRP? So isotropic radiated power. With a station of 200 watts transmitter power, two decibels of feed line loss, 2.8 decibels of duplexer loss, 1.2 decibels of circulator loss, so you add all those losses together, and a 7 dBi antenna gain. Now EIRP is because it is in reference to that imaginary antenna, and if it's asking you for EIRP, then you have to take into account that 2.15, but in this case they've already given us a 7 dBi, they're not trying to trick us. So again, we'll take the gains and losses, Add or subtract them, you get a one decibel gain. We convert that to a non logarithmic value that is 1.26. So your EIRP is 1.26 times 200 watts, that gives you 252 watts. That's how you find the answer to that. You can memorize it if you want to. I think it's easier just to, I don't know, that's up to you. I think it's easier just to figure it out yourself. That gives you, remembering one way to figure something out, you got three questions that you took care of. Okay, this one I have no idea. What frequency band has the smallest first Fresnel zone? Here is a Fresnel zone. So your, your radiated signal is gonna cover different paths and it's gonna arrive from different paths and you really want them to arrive about the same time if you have something obstructing, then you're losing part of that signal out of that Fresnel zone. Just remember, 5.8 gigahertz for this particular question. Out of all of these, the smallest first Fresnel zone is 5.8 5 gigahertz. What is antenna efficiency? And that is radiation resistance divided by the total resistance. I've got radiation efficiency pulled up here at k0bravogolf.com forward slash eff.html. And you can see some of the efficiency that he has going on here. And not efficient, not efficient, not efficient, getting more efficient as you near that uh, resonant frequency, I suppose, of that 10.5 foot, foot whip. And you can calculate the efficiency, but that is it. Radiation resistance divided by the total resistance gives you that antenna efficiency. No antenna is efficient. From what I read, you're only getting 50 to 60% of the power delivered that antenna is going to come out. Which of the following improves the efficiency of a ground-mounted quarter wave vertical antenna? And that is installing a ground radial system. And the more radials, the better, because that gives you a better ground. Yeah, right, we're going down to the last couple. Which of the following determines ground losses for a ground-mounted vertical antenna operating on HF? Assuming that you don't have any, uh, any radials put down, then the soil conductivity is going to determine your ground losses. So again, if you're over red clay versus salt water, then your soil conductivity is going to affect that. And we're on the last question now, and that is yet another one that we can um, think about. How much gain does an antenna have compared to a half wavelength dipole? If that antenna has six dBi, or six decibel gain over an isotropic. This is a math problem, it's just subtraction. Remember that the dipole has a dBi gain 
of or a dB gain of 2.15 over the isotropic radiator. And so all you have to do is take six decibel gains over the isotropic radiator, and that is six minus 2.15 gets you 3.85 decibels. So if you were in reference to dBi, uh, that would be, or dBd over the dipole, it's 3.85 dBd. So that's how you figure that one out. Alrighty, we're about to get into some charts now. Let's get ready. I'm Robbie W1RCP. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching 73.